have seen so far a simple linear regression model and multiple linear regression model. In this class, we are going to see how to construct a, a regression model by considering different independent variables that is a model building using regression analysis. What we are going to do? Model building is the process of developing an estimated regression equation that describes the relationship between dependent variable and one or more independent variables. What is the meaning of model building? There are different independent variables there and there is some dependent variable. We are going to find out how to construct a regression model by considering all the independent variable. Whether we have to consider all independent variables or which variable has to be dropped or which variable has to be added. The major issues in model building are finding the proper functional form of the relationship and selecting the independent variables to be included the model. Two concept is there, one is what kind of relationship is going to be formed, one is whether it is linear or non-linear and the other one is how to select the appropriate independent variables. General linear regression model, suppose we collected data for one dependent variable y and k independent variables, the independent variables are x1, x2 and so on and xk. Objective is to use these data to develop an estimated regression equation that provides the best relationship between the dependent and independent variable. So, general form of linear regression model is y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 z 1 plus beta 2 z 2 plus and so on plus beta p z p plus error term. Here the z j j equal to 1 2 up to p is a function of x 1 x 2 the variables for which the data are collected. In some cases each z j may be a function of only one x variable only one independent variable. If it is only one independent variable that is called a simplest first order model with one predicted variable is this shape. What is happening here? The value of z is taken only x1, there will be an error term. This is the simplest linear regression model. Now, we will go for modeling curve linear relationships. This problem is taken from this book, Statistics for Business and Economics, 11th edition by David and Anderson, Sweeney and Williams. To illustrate, let us consider the problem facing a company called Reynolds, a manufacturer of industrial scales and laboratory equipment. Managers at Reynolds want to investigate the relationship between length of the employment of their sales people and the number of electronic laboratory scales sold. So, what they want to know? Their length of employment of their sales people that means, how much years they are working in that company versus number of electronic laboratory scales sold, how much they have sold. Generally, what is the assumption? A person who having lot of experience will sell more product. Okay. The table in the next slides gives the number of scales sold by 15 randomly selected sales people for the most recent sales period that the number of months each salesperson has been employed by the firm. So, this slide shows the data, scales the product sold, months employed. So, here months employed is going to be our independent variable, scales sold that is going to be our dependent variable. So, this is y, this is our x. With the help of python, first we will construct a simple linear regression equation. Let us see what is happening. I have brought the screenshot of python programming. At the end of the class, I will run this codes. You can type these commands in your PC and you can verify the answer. Import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import statsmodel.api as sm. The data which I have stored in the file name called reynolds.xlsx. So, just I have read this data. So, this was the data set. There is a y, this is the x. Let us do a regression analysis. First, before going for regression analysis, we will go for a scatter plot. For drawing the scatter plot, 
So, plt dot scatter T b 1 that is my first variable months employed this variable. Second variable which is going to be in y axis scales sold this one. When I plot it, it seems to be there is a positive trend. What is the meaning of positive trend? When the number of months employed is increasing and the sales also increasing. It says that the person who has experienced as a salesperson can sell more products when compared to an inexperienced person. So, this was the code for running a regression. So, x equal to T b 1 that is my months employed is independent variable y T b 1 in square bracket scale sold that is my dependent variable. I am going to add x 2 equal to sm dot add underscore constant. So, that in my regression model I will get a constant. So, model equal to sm dot ols, ols is ordinary least square method, y is dependent variable, x 2 is independent variable because in the x 2 I am going to have the x variable also. So, model equal to model dot fit. So, print model dot summary. So, I got this one. So, how to interpret this one? Look at this constant say y equal to plus 2.37 months implied. We will test the significance of the model. First, we will look at the f statistics and corresponding p value. Here, p value is 1.24 to the power minus y, very low as a whole model, this model is significant. Then, look at the significance of individual variables. The month employed is independent variable. When I look at the p value, this also less than 0 0.05. So, we can say the months employed is a significant variable. This was my model here the sales is that is the y variable number of electronic laboratory scale sold months equal to number of months the sales person has been employed. What will happen? First we will plot the residual plot because as I told you in my previous classes it is not only the r square f p value and individual significance value is not important the same time we have to check the residual of that regression model. First we will find the re residual uh, E equal to model dot resid underscore Pearson. So, this was my residual. So, for the x 2 that is my independent variable I have predicted the y hat value. This is my predicted y value. Now, I am going to make a plot between in x axis I have taken y hat in y axis it is the error. When you look at this picture in x axis it is our y hat in y axis standardized residual. When I look at the standardized residual it is not coming in the rectangular shape you see that there is a possibility of certain kind of a curvilinear relationship. It you may not uh, agree it is exactly kind of a curvilinear relationship because our number of data set is less. When there are more number of data set we can exactly say. So, now what is happening? It is not in the rectangular shape it is it is suggesting us that there may be curvilinear relationship between x and y. Then very important point why we have to go for curvilinear relationship. Although the computer output shows that the relationship is significant because p value is less than 0.05 and that a linear relationship is explains a higher percentage of variability that is r square. So, r square is 78.1 see here is 78.1 and going back see that r square is 78.1 it is a good explaining power. The standardized residual plot suggests that there is a curve linear relationship is needed. So, what is a point which I wanted to say not only r square not only the significant value apart from that we have to draw the different residual plots to verify whether the model is correct or not. When we are plotting the standardized residual model, it is suggesting for a nonlinear relationship. So, we are going for what kind of nonlinear relationship we are going to have it. 
z1 is x1 no problem that z2 I am going to square that x value. So, this squared value that is x1 square is taken as a new independent variable previously only x1 was there. So, the square of x1 is a new independent variable. So, this is a general linear model there is a independent variables are having some non-linear pattern that is x1 square. The first what I am going to do I am going to prepare a new data set that is a square of x for that purpose x underscore sq I am naming that way equal to x double star 2. So, that is a squared. So, this is a squared value. So, this squared value is going to be taken as another independent variable where that you see that x underscore nu is np dot column underscore st stack you see this x squared. Then I wanted to have the constant. So, x underscore nu 2 equal to sm dot add underscore constant x comma nu. So, the model 2 equal to sm dot ols y comma x underscore nu 2. So, model dot fit then print summary. So, now what has happened? Look at this point. See there are two independent variable one is x 1 and x 2. So, one variable is x 1 is the month the x 2 is the squared value. Look at the r square the r square is previously 0.7 now it is improved. So, our model is good look at the significant of each variable one is uh, x 1 another one is the squared value of that x 1. So, both are significant value this also less than 0 .0, uh, 0 0.05 this also less than 0.05. Now, what has happened when you introduce a squared value then the uh, model is significant. Not only this significance is uh, enough for us to decide whether the model is good or not we should go for error analysis. So, what is that the model which we have created 45.3 6.34 months going back this is 6.34 months then minus 0.0345 this was minus 0 point that is a squared value of month. Now, look at the standardized residual plot of new variable. So, here what happened I have found the error term here in the error term for the model which you have created. So, I have predicted y hat. So, now I am drawing a graph between y hat and standardized residual. So, what is happening it is a kind of a linear relationship, but not only that there is a you can see that there is a possibility of getting a rectangular shape. So, that we can say our model is improved. How to interpret the second order model? The figure corresponding standardized residual plot shows that the previous curvilinear pattern has been removed at 0.05 level of significance our python output shows that the overall model is significant because the p value for the f test is 0 0.00 this one this value because 8.75 mul to the uh, 10 to the power minus 7 is very almost 0. Note also that the p value corresponding to the t ratio of month square is 0 0.002 this one this one this also significant. Hence, we can conclude that adding month square as a new variable to the model also significant with an adjusted r square value of 88.6 percentage we should be pleased with the fit provided by this estimated regressive equation where there is a nonlinear relationship is there. Meaning of linearity in a general linear regression model in multiple regression analysis the word linear this word linear in the term general linear model refers to the fact that that beta 0 beta 1 beta p all have exponents of 1. What is the meaning of this one is say suppose a model is there uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2. When I say linear model this coefficient of beta 1, beta 2, beta 0 these are linear not there is a x 1 and y that relationship that is not uh, we are not discussing about relation between x and y when we say linear the coefficient of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 are linear. It does not imply that the relation between y and x is linear indeed we have seen one example 
how equation a general linear model can be used to model a curvy linear relationship. The previously we have done one model y equal to b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x1 square. Actually this x1 square is non-linear, but we have called it as linear model because this b0, b1 and b2 is the linear. Now I will run the python code uh, for this model which I have explained. Now in the python environment I will tell you how to do the curvilinear relationship. First I have imported the necessary libraries pandas, numpy, matplotlib, stats model I am running this. Then I am going to import the data, the data which I have stored in excel file, the file name is Reynolds. This is the data. This data shows that months employed is our independent variable, scales sold is our dependent variable. First we will go for a scatter plot between these two variables. Now this scatter plot shows that there is a positive relationship between months employed and scales sold. This implies a person having more experience can sold more scales, more products. Now we will go for a simple linear regression equation x equal to that months employed there is a TBL1, y is our dependent variable TBL1 uh, scales sold, x2 sm dot add underscore constant x because I need to have a constant and model equal to sm dot ols. So model dot fit I am printing the summary. So it shows that when you look at that first one is look at the r square it is 0 0.781. The f uh, probability f p value is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 5 that is it is very low. So the mo overall model is significant. Now look at the independent variable that is our month employed that corresponding p value is 0 0.00. So the months employed independent variable also is significant independent variable. Now we can construct a regression equation that is y equal to 111.227 plus 2.37 months employed. Now everything is okay that is not important apart from this we have to draw the residual plots we have to look at the behavior of the residual plots that will say whether our model is correct or not. So I am plotting the residual so this is my residual value then the residual plot what, are, what is going to be there in x axis I am going to have the y predicted value in y axis we are going to have standardized residual value. This is my y hat that is the y predicted value. Now I am going to draw the scatter plot between y hat and standardized residual. Standardized you look at this one there is a curve linear relationship it is not the straight line it is not coming in the rectangular shape. So, it is suggesting us that instead of going for linear relationship, you go for nonlinear or curvilinear relationship that may be the better model for the given data set. So, what we are going to do? We have one independent variable that we are going to square that. You may ask why we have to square, you can go for cube also, you can go for uh, power 3, power 4, power 5, but at the beginning we start with the power 2. So, this was the my squared value. Now this variable is, is taken as another independent variable. Now we are having two independent variable. One independent variable is uh, months employed. Another independent variable is square of that months employed. Now that variable also look at this one x underscore squared that is taken as another independent variable. Now we will run the regression equation. Now what is happening? When you look at this the r square is previously 0.7 now it is a 0.9. So, the r square value is improved. So, the model is good model. The adjusted r square also 0 0.886 that suggests so the model is good. Look at the p value of f statistics. When you look at the p value this is very low less than 0 0.05 that means that the overall model is significant. Now, look at the two independent variable that one is x1 another one is a square uh, x2 here the x2 is nothing but the square of the first independent variable. When you look at the p value for the first variable it is 0 
for second variable it is 0 0.002 that is where the square term. So, both the p value is less than 0 0.05 we can conclude that both the independent variables are significant. It is not enough to check only the individual significant and overall significant and r square apart from this we have to go for residual plot. So, when you go for a residual plot for our second model, so this is the standardized residual. Now, we will go for predicted value of nu y that is y hat 2. Now, we will plot it. Now, it shows that there is no it is look like there is no curvilinear relationship. Now, we can say that in this model instead of going for a simple linear relationship when you go for curvilinear relationship that is the best model for the given data. In this lecture we have seen how to do a curvilinear regression model. In our previous lecture I have explained uh, how to do simple linear regression and multiple linear regression model, but in this lecture I have given you an example when should we go for curvilinear relationship between x and y. We have taken one example in that example first we have taken with a simple linear relationship between x and y then we look at the residual plot that residual plot suggested that we should go for nonlinear relationship. So, we have squared that independent variable again we have constructed a new regression model in that we have realized that when we are looking at the residual plot of the new model we realize that the curvilinear model is the better model for the given data when compared to simple linear relationship. The next class will go for interaction how to do if there is an interaction between two independent variable x 1 and x 2 how to do that kind of regression model that we will see in the next class. Thank you.